<laughs> hey, welcome back to the Baco Motorsports Power Hour. Lewis Amistoy is gone. We've got Steve Hughes from Kern County Raceway Park here. Over here. He's over there. Yeah. Over there. There we Where go. I'm usually hanging out. Yeah. And we've got a just filled with drivers segment here. I've got Todd Gilliland. Nearest to me, Derek Thorne in the middle, and Todd's father, David, at the end. This is a star-studded field. How are you guys doing? I'm doing good. I'm getting excited to, about this weekend. Can't wait to get there. We got Todd's a, a third-generation driver whose dad and grandfather raced at the old Mason Marin uh, Raceway in East Bakersfield, and I uh, was there for both of them running, so I've been around a long time, almost as old as dirt. And you're coming off a big win at, in Florida. Talk about that. Um, that was a really cool weekend. Um, everyone worked super hard over the offseason to get that car ready for New Smyrna. Uh, I think it means a lot coming out from California to, to race against the East guys because most people don't think it, the West Series is as tough as the East Series. And I think that um, shows a lot about how great of an organization Bill McNally Racing is to be able to come out here to the East and um, win a race like that. Yeah, that's a little uh, we call in sports world east coast or sec biased yeah a little bit <laughs> pac 12 yeah. people will tell you about the uh, east coast bias but we're here to talk the uh winter showdown a super late model race uh something that all three of you guys are very familiar with driving those cars maybe you not so much as the uh elder two in this group Derek, talk a little bit about this winter showdown. You had a great run here last year. Yeah, we did. You know, Kern's always been good to us. It's awesome to come back here and run in our home track. You know, we're only 30 minutes away and be able to come back here, race against, you know, what I consider to be some of the best competition in the country to have Todd come out and to have six or seven guys with East Coast influence, East Coast teams come out here and run, you know, this race. It says something about not only the, the size of the event, but the, the way it's growing and to have guys like that filter in from around the country competing for 30,000 to win a lot of them like another three or four guys actually have a, a contention to win an additional 10 so $40,000 to take home you know to a certain individual is big and for us to be out here racing against the best you know it doesn't get any better than that and now you're going to take a year off and really focus on Todd's career right now what does that mean to you and your family uh, it's special you know I've um you know, I grew up around racing with my dad racing right here, or, you know, at the old Mason Marin Raceway. And um, some of my earliest memories as a child at a racetrack was at Mason Marin. And so, um, you know, I've grown up around racing. I've been around racing. Um, I still love and and, and and I'm very passionate about driving and racing myself. But, but what Todd's been able to accomplish at, at such a young age, you know, I just feel like, um, you know, it, it, it's time. He's raced, you know, for, for 10 years and really heavily the last five years and he's raced for me and, and my team and you know obviously racing at the cup level you're gone four days a week 38 weeks a year so so I missed a lot and um, you know and and in the situation that I was in on the cup side you know it's definitely not as competitive as, as I want to be and um, you know and, and with some of the opportunities that Todd has uh, with Toyota and TRD being behind him uh, you know Napa um, Bill McAnally Racing and of course Kyle Busch Motorsports. He is, he's got an opportunity this year that um, that that you know that that I only dreamed of having. Um, not even at his age. I mean, I wasn't even racing at his age. So I just feel like it's really important to really focus and and for. Uh, to capitalize on the opportunities that he has at hand, um, you know, to, to keep him progressing the way he wants to in racing. And, and he's, he's been able to do some, some pretty incredible things, win some big races, and, and uh, you know, I just really want to be there for that. Right on. That's great. And maybe we should find out exactly how old are you, Todd? I'm 15. 15. <laughs> and you tested a few weeks ago in the West car. Now you've been out there in the Super Late model. What's the difference? Um, there's a big difference. Um, I didn't expect there to be that big of a difference after I came out here and tested in the K&N car, but um, once I got in the super late models, um, it just felt a lot faster. Like I thought the K&N car felt really fast through the center of the corner and stuff, but um, when I got in the super late model, it just it was completely different. Um, you look at the track completely different. You have to drive it different. So um, it's just it's just really cool to be able to feel it two different ways like that. Yeah, I think and, we've got some video from last year's race if Chris wants to run that while we talk. I think the man to your left there can tell you the difference because he's been in and out of those cars for the last couple of years and uh, 
He could have told you that there was going to be a big difference, right, Derek? Oh, absolutely. You know, to have it's neat to have the Canyon cars come to Kern to have the you know the exposure that they bring to the track and been fortunate you know to be able to run both Canyon cars and the super lates here. But I would have to compare the sewer the Canyon stuff to more like driving a taxi cab versus driving a sports car. You know, very top heavy. They do have a little bit more power, but uh, narrower, a little longer wheelbase, roll over a little bit more. So you know, but it is neat to be able to come out here and run super lates. This, this facility, I think, suits this car well. Uh, puts on great racing side by side two lanes two grooves you know it allows everybody to move around and i think it's just a good facility to have for this type of car now there's a guy out here uh last year came from georgia somewhere this bubba dude <laughs> yeah. this 26 car and uh they were showing this uh b-roll here and he's out in front how are you going to catch this guy yeah i don't know he's just that's the beautiful thing about racing you know if it was easy everybody would do it and it's an ever-evolving sport and you know i'm sure dave and todd can both contest sometimes you show the show up to the track and it's it's a walk in the park and you hit the setup just right and you know and everything you do is is fairly simple and, and by the book and sometimes you show up and you're making bay Bruce swings at it all weekend hoping that you're going to stumble across something and so just from a facility standpoint, Bakersfield provides us some really nice weather. Um, but also from that standpoint, you know, with 50 cars being on the racetrack laying down rubber, it's going to be 75, 80 degrees on Sunday when the race comes. We're testing at night on Friday. So to be able to get your car dialed in at night, but yet come back around to have a car, have a well enough balance to be able to be good at daytime and nighttime, get the setup right, get the shocks right, get everything right, tires right. It's, it's one of those things about racing that makes it difficult. What'd you learn? What'd you learn from the inaugural event? What What have you learned that you're going to bring into this year's event? That That's a little different. Go Go faster, I guess. Go, More, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> well, you, well, were, you were fast in qualifying. Yeah, we were. We were, and I think we've changed it up a little bit this year. We've uh, Mike Keen, the crew chief, is is a very smart man, and he's been hard at it. And none of us on the Campbell Motorsports team like to lose. Um, it's one of those things where we take it pretty close to heart when something like that goes on. So, I think we've been at the drawing board for 361 days now. I think we got four days left. So, I think hopefully what we've learned in the off season and from last year after the winter showdown can transpire into what we got to do this year are these cars impounded after the qualifying races or can you make changes for race day that's a good question i think they're not they're not impounded after qualifying because we have heat races afterwards so we'll have a 50 lap 50 lap heat race and i'm sure steve can can run us down on how this works but we'll have a 50 lap heat race after qualifying that'll that'll line up the starting grid or the starting field for the 100 250 lap run sunday right, yeah I, I, I don't don't get me started on if they're impounded or not there's way too much information in my head yeah. to concern myself with all those the rules and the procedures of that i have them written down i just don't have them with me right. uh, but yeah. opening night's going to be phenomenal 5150 energy opening night uh as derek said the race for autism qualifying races um, we're going to have the quick 12 they'll go off first so the quick 12 qualifiers will race in that first heat race then we'll finish up with the other two and splitting where, where those race for autism qualifying races are is in the middle of that 80 lap lucas oil modified feature so we'll start the night with 40 laps lucas oil modifieds run those uh race for autism qualifying races and then finish the night with the lucas oil final 40 so that should be a pretty good format man um, i love it when they split up main events like that um, where guys can get a chance to tinker with the car a little bit and then come back for that final 40 lap sprint it's going to be really good and it all kicks off on thursday at the uh, timbler Brewing company. Where we yeah, everybody's middle. everybody's invited to that deal. Big, That's four uh, to seven o'clock on a. Yeah, five to five to five, seven. Five to seven, and yeah. then all the haulers go out there, and we had the little earth shake the other day just for <laughs> Timbler. Yeah, guys, just so you guys could feel yeah. it, so Todd could feel it. But uh, the haulers go out there. Then Friday is. Uh, That's rolling day, man. They'll be rolling, rolling in, in, getting rolling parked. In. Tech and starts. You know, practice Friday night for the uh, yep. Southwest Tour Cars Super Late Models. And then all the Saturday, the uh, well, let's don't forget fine. about the dirt race, man. Oh, yeah, on forgot, Friday, say, yeah. I mean, Friday, uh, Friday, the, you're gonna be out there, and you can go out there and watch uh, cars turn left on the big oval and practice if you want, or you can go just a little to the north and watch cars uh, beat and bang a little bit on the uh, on the dirt track yeah. for the last race of the winter showdown series. Well, the winter series, winter yeah, series. but e everybody that showed up to the racetrack on Monday or Tuesday for testing, <clears throat> Lee Bumgarten and I went through the pits yesterday afternoon and offered them up some dirt track tickets. So after practice is done, they should be loaded up by about 8.30, just in time for the main events for that fourth and final round of the winter series at the dirt track. Well, that's going to be uh, pretty good. We were out there for that, uh, for the last winter series race at the dirt track, and they were running on the motocross track as well as some testing. Buddy Shepard was out there testing, so you're hearing 
noise from oh, all. There was buzz going all, all over buzz that going place. On everywhere, yeah, so it was, it was, it was really great. Yeah. Quite a facility, so... What are you looking forward to in this race? You're going to get your second straight win, right? Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> and um, I'm looking forward to 250 laps of experience at a, a fast track like this against the, um, some of the best. So um, I think I'll learn a lot as the race goes on and hopefully um, take that into this year in the k &N series and have a successful year. You're running the full k &N West series. Are you going to run any more East? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to run six more East races. Wow. And how many super late model races for Cobb Wish Motorsports? Um, eight right now, but um, we're working on some more. Working on some more. And Derek, what, what do you got going this year? Uh, I think kind of similar, similar schedules last year. Got uh, Carlos Vieira as our teammate this year at the 5150 and Race for Autism campaign that we're kind of pushing. And, you know, we'll be running the SRL Southwest Tour full time. We'll run the Winter Showdown here, Summer Showdown in Evergreen, go back to the Snowball Derby, and then also partnered up with the Jet Motorsports again out of Florida and uh, hopefully run a few races for them as well. And you started off down there as well at the Snowball Derby. Did not go as well this year as last year. No, it didn't. We ran good. Just uh, last pit stop didn't fall the way we needed it to uh, with the final 30 laps and got shuffled back in the pack towards the last green flag run there. And top 10 still, but still not obviously the – we had high hopes going into that event, as everybody does, but not as good as we thought we might get. Out but of had some good good times at Speed Weeks, right? Oh, yeah. yeah let's definitely. talk about that for yeah. just a second. Let's, Todd, uh, Todd, Todd can contest to that, man. It's a grind. It's just 11 days. We were there for 11 days between testing and racing. Uh, we ran, I think we we're the only team to run both uh, divisions of pro and super late full time. But, you know, there's a, there's days off scheduled for certain divisions, but the days off we'd have in the super late, we'd have a race in the pro. <laughs> nice. For the days off in the pro, we'd have a race for the super. So, contest, big, big thanks to the Jet family for the opportunity. It's been on my bucket list for 10 years. And right. to be able to go back and do it and experience it you know it's a once in a lifetime kind of thing and for the time the team to stick behind me for us to make it through all events we we didn't finish each event but we made it all the way to the end till we finally had the bad luck strike us so it was a neat neat experience cool to have it all the cool. way through right on those laps how many laps uh, they actually they make it easy. It's only 35 laps. Oh, so. Most of them. There's 200 lap races for the pro, 100 lap for the pro, 100 lap for the super. But the rest of the events are all 35 so laps. Not too bad. No, nah, not too bad at all. Okay. Well, I want to thank all three of you for coming in. Mr. Hughes. Mind and, if I do uh, a quick recap? Yeah, do a quick recap. All right. So Thursday, the kickoff party, Tim yeah. Brewing Company, 5 to 7. Friday night, dirt race at the dirt track at Kern County Raceway. What time does that start? That uh, gates at 5, or gates at 5, racing at 7.30. Uh, Saturday, 5150 Energy Drink opening night for the second annual winter showdown. Um, gates, I believe, at 2.30. Opening ceremonies at 6. But between 2.30 and 6, there's going to be some qualifying. Uh, for the Lucas Oil Modifieds and for the Super Lates. And then on Sunday, gates open at 10. Uh, we'll kick things off at about 1.30 with opening ceremonies. Then the Winter Showdown 250, man, the biggest race of the year. It's going to be great. It's going to be a lot of fun. We've got great weather, great drivers. I want to thank everybody for coming in. Yeah, thanks for having thank us you. on. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We'll get out of here, take a break, and get ready for the next segment.